Hi, and welcome back to the breakdown of the learner portfolio. Hopefully by now you have seen the earlier content of what it is and the components that break it down. For today, we'll continue with this with a bit of a recap of the purpose of the learner portfolio before really going into each component and breaking it down one by one, giving examples of how you could be considering the portfolio, what you need to be inserting into it, what it is even, and then at the end, we will consider examples. The purpose then, firstly, it allows personalized learning. It allows you to really explore those topics, those texts that resonate with you personally. It allows you to really foster a deep connection to the literature. And by choosing work that interests you, you can write personal responses and create a portfolio that really reflects your unique literary journey. It's not something that is being pushed on you by a teacher, a coach, an adult, parent. It's very much a reflection of you and what you find interesting, what you want to be putting into your portfolio. This personalized approach makes the study of literature much more engaging and meaningful. And it encourages you to delve into the areas that really spark your curiosity and your passion. It also considers reflective practice. By writing reflections, by analyzing text, you develop the metacognitive skills, the awareness of your own thinking processes, which ultimately enhances personal growth and learning. This reflective practice involves looking back on our reading and our analysis to understand how our thoughts and interpretations have evolved over our process. And this element of self-awareness and really helps us develop, develop as an effective reader, an effective writer, and enables us to learn to recognize and refine our analytical approaches as we progress through the course. Skill development also, through literary devices and annotations, we hone that critical thinking, that analytical writing. We build those close reading skills, which are essential competencies for higher education and even beyond into jobs later in life, families later in life. These skills are not only crucial for academic success, but also for understanding and interpreting the world around us. The ability to analyze the text critically, to write clearly and persuasively, and to read closely for detail and meaning helps us in skills in close life, later life, university, jobs, and so on. They really will serve well in any field of study or any career. And then assessment for learning. This is not an externally marked portfolio. It is a formative assessment tool and it provides you, teachers, with insights into your progress, your strengths, weaknesses, areas for improvement, and it guides your ongoing development as a scholar, as a literary critic. The portfolio also allows for continuous feedback and continuous self-assessment as you progress through the years. It helps you identify where you need to focus, how you can improve those skills over time. And it is vital for growth as a learner to really provide a clear path for that academic and that personal development. In essence, the learner portfolio is your intellectual journey documented in real time. It's a space where you engage deeply with your literature, you explore complex ideas, you refine your understanding, and through reflection, through analysis, you embrace it and use it as a tool for exploration, for growth, and let it reflect on the depth of your insights and the richness of your literary exploration throughout your IB studies. By engaging with the learner portfolio, you are not only preparing for your exams, you are also cultivating, and this is my favorite part, you're cultivating a lifelong appreciation for literature. And you're developing the skills that will benefit you in many areas of your life, not just the direct right now. So use it, dive into those readings, reflect thoughtfully, write analytically, and annotate diligently. Your portfolio is and will be a testament to your intellectual journey. So make it meaningful. Make it reflective of your passion for literature. Make it showcase by the end how this has changed. And then on a last note, the portfolio is a way of you evidencing that you're not copying, you're not plagiarizing later. When it comes to 
the structured assessments later. If there's room for doubts, there's room for question by IB examiners. The portfolio is the last resort to really consider how you've progressed through the IB platform, the IB progress. So if you didn't need motivation before, that is the last thing that will really provide a backup of your evidence of learning through and going through the IB program. So now we will begin and we will go into the aspects required of the portfolio, the reflections. The first component is the reflection, as I mentioned earlier, and the plan is to really consider what reflections entail and why they are crucial, how they contribute to your development as a literary scholar. What are they? Reflections in the learner profile are your personal responses, your personal insights into literary text studied throughout the IB course. So over the space from the very beginning to the very end. And they're more than just summaries. They have to be more than just summaries. They are opportunities for you to engage critically with the text, to explore themes, characters, and literary techniques, and to really reflect on how they resonate with your own thoughts. The reflections also serve as a platform for you to articulate your evolving understanding, to change how you develop your personal responses to literature. And they require thoughtful analysis. They require the introspection and they provide the space for you to really develop and build and explore those deeper meanings embedded within the text. As you engage with literature, the reflections prompt you to consider not only what the texts say, but also how it makes you feel and think. So a key aspect of reflections is their role in fostering those critical thinking skills. And by analyzing literary elements such as themes, characters, techniques, you develop the ability to really dissect and interpret text from multiple perspectives, which gives you an analytical approach which can enhance your capacity to discern underlying messages and really appreciate the complexities of the literary works that you consider. Reflections also encourage you to make personal connections with the literature that you're studying. It prompts you to reflect on how those themes resonate with your own experiences, your own beliefs, your cultural background. And this aspect of the portfolio really enhances your understanding of the text, but it also deepens your emotional and intellectual engagement with it. It makes it more than just a text. It makes it more than just reading. It really shows that you're considering aspects of it and applying it even to yourself. Another significant aspect of reflection is their focus on the evolution of understanding over time. As you revisit texts and you reflect on those initial interpretations, you track your intellectual growth throughout the course. This cultivates true metacog metacognitive skills and allows you to become more aware of your own learning processes and strategies. Examples and prompts. So, so a section that I'm sure you're eager to see and consider, okay, that's the talking about it, but how? Consider reflecting on the development of a specific character throughout a novel. You might start by discussing your initial impressions of the character, how they evolve as a narrative unfolds. You could then analyze key moments that really shape your perception and explore the character's motivations and conflicts and growth. Alternatively, you might reflect on a recurring theme across different text studies. So you could discuss how your understanding of the theme deepened over time. Obviously citing specific examples from each text to really illustrate your analysis and show how you've taken it further. And then consider how cultural or historical context really influenced your interpretation, why certain themes resonated more strongly with you. So this is a challenging aspect, but a valuable exercise. So explore how a complex narrative structure or an ambiguous ending affected your reading experience. Then discuss, write down, note, think in your mind, the strategies that you employed to unravel the text complexities and how your interpretation of the text shifted as you uncovered those new layers of meanings. Did anything change? Why reflections? Reflections are a key part. So why do we have to do them? Obviously more than just being part of the portfolio. The benefits of engaging deeply with reflections are profound. 
They foster critical thinking by really cultivating your ability to analyze and interpret text critically. They hone your skills in textual analysis and argumentation through the making of personal connections with literature, and they enhance your empathy, your cultural awareness, your appreciation for diverse perspectives, and they track the evolution of your understanding over time. They promote metacognition, empowering you to really monitor and regulate how your learning has changed, the processes and strategies that you have used. Thank you. We'll leave it there for this one, and then we will consider with the following components into the next video. Thank you.